Man, it's cold out here today. I can see my breath. I'm wrapping up a job today that was really cool for me. I'm glad I was able to get to do it. Uh, for this customer, I was able to sell them a riding lawnmower with a plow, their Generac generator, and fortunately do all the low voltage and future proofing in the house. So I'll take you through a little bit of what we did. Oftentimes when you have a builder or an electrician do your low voltage, it turns out uh, pretty rough. The uh, low voltage is kind of a specific field and you have to be updated and on, in the know with what needs to happen in order to future proof a house. So this house, well, we'll just take you through it. These speakers were installed two per level and they are LRC speakers. And that's just gonna give them the ability for whole house audio. There's a set of these on each level and in the garage. Wi-Fi, the customer provided his own Wi-Fi spot, uh, but these were installed one per level. So he'll get great coverage throughout this entire house. Because we used Hikvision cameras, we found a Hikvision ring system. And this was installed just so that the customer didn't have to have multiple apps on his phone. It was easier, it was better to go with the system where he already has to have that app on his phone. So the house was pre-wired. We did this a couple of months ago. And this is where the TVs are being installed. Everywhere where the, a TV was being installed, we ran two Cat5s and a coax cable. That'll give the homeowner the ability to use either a cable box, and then if they have a smart device, it can be physically wired to the network. And the third line I ran so that they can use an HDM, an HDMI matrix switcher. Okay, so when you trim this wire, the correct way to do it, so you've already stripped this off, there's a pull string inside every Cat5 wire. I'm going to take this pull string and peel it back. I'm going to peel the insulation off to about here, and then I'm going to cut this end off. Okay, so if I nick the wire, which I probably did when I was stripping the coating, I'm cutting that section off. I'm going to use this pull string, pull it back to about right here, and then cut this tip off of here. I just can't do it while I'm recording because I've only got two hands. So for the home runs for this, I used a bridal leg route. These, this is a two inch bridal legs. NEC says that all voltage wiring needs to be self-supported by steel structure. And these bridal legs are steel, so it meets the code. Okay, so now I'm to the part where I'm gonna trim out. This is what's called a smart house can. All the low voltage wiring goes inside of it. It's structured media. There'll be modules that plug into this. I'll show you a picture of it later when it's finished, but uh, this is the right way to do a nice house when you're doing low voltage. So if I just mount that panel to the wall, that would be what I call a dick move because it would make the panel sit, the front of the panel would sit roughly right here. So what I'm going to do is build this out so that it's the same level as this panel. So that I'm mounting on the same surface here. Then when they go to drywall it later, they're able to drywall it in and it fits flush just like the electric panels. So I've just made a couple of boards that I'm going to go ahead and attach here. And then I'll attach the smart house can to those boards, making the end of this smart house can even with the end of the electric box. Okay, so now I have the panel built out and it is the same level as the panel, the same depth as the electric panel. So when you go to drywall this, it'll all look nice. Okay, I'm on to trimming out this can now. This was actually quite a bit of work to get here. So aside from the fact that I know what each of these positions are, just as a backup, all of this labeling is wired. Uh, it's all labeled, all the wiring is labeled. I meant 
um, but it's behind there. And so if need be, we could always get back to this point to find out exactly what wire went to where. But all of this is going to be labeled wool and finished. And I'm getting a little bit closer. Okay, so there were several mistakes made. And one of them were that were made, as you see, where we pre-wired the cameras to. Okay, so for the cameras, we installed what happened, as you see here, they were supposed to be trimmed out like this. With the back boxes on there, and they weren't. They just drilled a very small hole and poked our wire through. So unfortunately, I had to put an outside can on there, mount the camera to the can, in order to fit the splice inside it. But in the bigger picture, it looks fine. It's not very noticeable. I just would have preferred that they had uh, trimmed out for the cameras the way they did for the electric. Okay, so just a brief overview. Right now, the house isn't finished yet. He doesn't have the rack or the shelf, so I've just got his camera system up and going, it's sitting on the floor for now, but there'll be a rack installed here later. Uh, just a brief overview of why why and what I did with the smart house can. So, as you've seen in the earlier video, every outlet had two wires going to it. So every room has two jacks, okay? That'll give him the ability to add a HDMI matrix switch to this later, and he'll be able to control the video from his phone and say, I want to watch this movie in this room and send it there. Uh, this is the speakers for the whole house wiring. And again, we're just waiting for the customer to get the, uh, the rest of the equipment, the rack and the receiver and everything else that's going into it. And hopefully Comcast doesn't come in here and screw up all my beautiful work when they come in. Everything that I had was modular designed so it plugs straight into the panel. But that's it for now in this stage of the build where it's at. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you're building the house, let me know.